There you go. Now fix. All right. Fix it where we can see. No, fix that. I know. I'm gonna get there. Hello, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda Give from Deep South here. Homestead. He's still fiddling. Getting there. Getting there. Getting there. We're getting there. If. If it. Yeah, there, there we, we go. go. I was fixing to <laughs> say. We got such a day, delayed reaction on yeah. everything. But, um, oh, man. put this where I can see. If I gotta read. Okay, I'm getting good. Uh, we've got okay. a lot of people in. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, sorry about last weekend. Our um, live was, feed was horrible. It was bad. The weather was real bad. I mean, it was just bad. <laughs> camera needs to go up a little. A little bit. Okay, hang on here a minute, guys. Miss Wanda's telling me I need to go up well, with Well, we're looking at the top of your, just a little of your head, so I, I think they might want to see all of your head. I but anyway, know. the live feed was horrible, so I took it down last week. Um, it's kind of high, though. Well, bring it back down, but just not a, not all the way down halfway to your face. Y'all. No, oh, I'm just talking about how did you... Uh, how did I what? Give me just a minute here, guys. <laughs> he's he's really uh, y'all seeing him up close and personal. Probably too close. Now oh. see you got it crooked and it, it's got to go up and then you got to turn it back where I'm in it. There we go. That's a little better. All right, now we're there. Okay. Well, well, when it's way up there and we're looking down into chat, we're not actually looking at our at our congregation here or our, our group our of congregation. people. Congregation. I'm used to just being a minister, I suppose, but uh, but I mean we're not looking at the people, and I like to look people in the well, eye. Well, that's when why I talk to them. when I'm talking, you read the comments, and when you're talking, I'll read the comments, and that yeah. way both of us aren't looking away all the time. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we took last week's down. Um, Hello, Mr. Buddy. There was one thing. I don't know if very many of you uh, caught it or not. The picture that I put up for last week's, everybody was commenting beforehand, and a lot of them were going to come back and watch the stream later. They wanted to know which one of the three girls was me, and quite a few people got it, but I did put the picture back up. For all of you that wanted to know which one of these three girls was me is the oldest. I was the oldest. I have two younger sisters. And then when I turned nine, the next day I got a baby brother for my birthday. Uh, Alan wants to know, do we buy our poultry or let our hens go broody and hatch some biddies? We actually do both. Well, my hens went broody and they hatched biddies and I was excited. I had three different hens in what a period of a month, maybe a little over a month, went broody and hatched. And uh, one by one, they all disappeared. I have one chick right now. And Danny had to go on a rat killing mission. I did. We actually had rats that was uh, that was killing our baby chicks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, when I say rats, I'm talking about, where's my, where's my screen at? <laughs> Big rats. Now, somebody's asking, am I okay? This is kind of funny. I told Wanda. <laughs> I knew y'all were going to get I knew y'all. I knew y'all were going to see this. Uh I just got out of the shower just a couple of minutes ago, and for some strange reason, I tried a new soap, and I was doing my face up, and when I went to wash my face, it got in my eyes, and guys, I thought I was going to go blind. <laughs> he's, he's done everything to his I eyes. I have done That's everything in the last little while to get this red out of my eyes. That soap literally cooked my eyes. I mean, I was just like begging God. I was like, please let this burning stop. Um, but it, it finally eased up. They're just itching now. They're, they're like, feel scratchy feeling. So Whatever's in that soap ain't something Ooh. we need to be using. No, that soap messed with my eyes bad. I'm telling you, boy, it was... Was it a homemade soap? Uh, no. Okay, because that's going to say it could have been something in, in one of No, the, it was like one of them... A, you had on the uh, vanity in there, and I didn't want to open a new bar of soap, so I just grabbed that off the vanity in there. And, uh, and man, I paid for that. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah. Man, I mean, I mean, my eyes are still burning. I mean, they hurt. 
and I wanted to show um one other thing. This is what I got. Now this wasn't supposed to be my this, birthday. No, present. it wasn't supposed to be her birthday present. It was actually supposed to come several days after her birthday, but it actually showed up on her birthday. These are ISA Browns. ISA Browns, some people call them. ISA Browns. We got 12 baby chicks. Um, these are my laying chickens for next year. Um, we have Rhode Island Reds that we bought in the spring last year. Last, I think, well, two years ago. In 2020. So they're 18 months old now. Yeah, they're 18 getting months. getting close to 18 months old. Yeah. So we usually have new chicks every two years. And so by the time these ISA Browns start laying, um, usually five to six months, because these lay early, um, we'll be ready to retire the others. Yeah, I mean, guy, we're actually using the little uh, uh, prefab chicken house that uh, that we showed on a YouTube video. We've got it wrapped in plastic right now because it's actually pretty cool here. And it's on the back of my she and shed. It's on the back patio. <laughs> it's not out. <laughs> he did put plastic down. I got plastic stuff. down. I got plastic underneath it. We got wood chips in it and everything so that it doesn't mess up the concrete or anything. And actually today it got too hot in there. I went and looked and the chicks were all the way at one end, staying away from the light. So I turned the light off all day. But I turned it back on a while ago. Okay, I was going to say, because it's supposed to get cool. Yeah, it's supposed to be cool again tonight. Yeah, Mark says he had an eye infection all week, so he's been out. Ah. Um, just wanted to share my birthday present showed up today. The Harvest Ripe Freeze Dryer. That's Laura. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we haven't been able to use ours as much no, as I wanted. not it, as much as we'd like to. The, uh, we have ours in the she shed. And with the moisture, it works great. But when I take stuff out, the moisture in our air starts rehydrating it before I can even get it in the kitchen and process it. So yeah. I've had to... Go from one room in the she shed to the other room, shut the door, and hope to get it all packaged and, and sealed because I can't even go from there, the she shed, to the house because of the moisture. It starts popping. So we've had a time with all the rain we've had. Paula Ray says, It just boggles me why anyone would give a, a thumbs down already on a live feed. <laughs> we've got people that just don't like us. They're just. Sure. Everybody has somebody. That everybody don't, like don't them. have. Everybody has somebody that just don't like them. That's right. I mean, we got people that's just pure. They're garbage, and they know they are, and and they just want to give a thumbs down. A lot of my videos in the morning, I'll be sitting there waiting, and at four o'clock they come on, and at four o two or four o three, we already got thumbs down, and it's just people who they just wait to thumbs down you. They they think that they have some kind of power or. They, they get off on giving people thumbs down and stuff like that. And to me, they're just trash. I mean, I don't, it doesn't bother me. As a matter of fact, thanks for the view. Um, Shelly is asking, she said the ball book 2020 says that raw pack and chicken, you should leave an inch and a quarter head space, but most everybody else is doing one inch. These books are usually pretty good. Uh, it's probably a quarter of an inch is probably not going to make or break you. No. On that, uh, it's probably because of the long processing time because you have to go an hour and a half on on quartz. Yeah. There's Perma Pasture and Mr. Yeah, he was in there. We have seen him way a while ago. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Sometimes I was watching this permaculture vegan Nazis are giving you thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching um I, I got the biggest kick. Y'all need to go watch Billy and Michelle Permapasture Farms sweet potato digging. I watched that while they were doing it. I laughed through the whole thing. I mean it's really they had a fantastic harvest, I'll tell you that. They did really good. Uh but I just I got the biggest kick out of their uh camaraderie between all of them. I mean it was really it was really good. And Metcalf showing up when he did. Showing, uh, actually, you need to get a real potato fork and not a pitch fork. <laughs> a hay fork. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You may have to find him a potato fork. No, we may have to. Uh, yeah. Well, we were hoping to have some company this weekend, and they didn't make it, but maybe next weekend. We'll see. Um, somebody said, thank, uh, good filming on the calf being born. Thank you. Um, yep. 
We well, I, we watch our animals really close, and when one starts, we know it within a week of whenever they're going to give birth. And I've learned to look at their pin bones in their tail and uh, and keep an and, eye. On. And I just you know I keep an eye on them. When I when I reach back there and those pin bones are loose on their tail and everything, I know we're within just a few days of giving birth. You know, so I and, and I just start watching. Now, if it happens at night. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it because I'm not going to stay up all yeah, night. We, all our births know. have been at night. Yeah, most of them have been all at night. All the cows till, till Betty. Yep, till Betty. And she is doing fantastic. Yeah, she's going to be in a video this week, um, the sweet potato video. Uh, yeah, we, we harvested the sweet potatoes that the deer ate off. And uh, we, we did a clip out of both gardens where we harvested potatoes there. And we're going to show you this week if I can get it edited tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and Betty's gonna be in it. I caught her running a little bit, but she's she's this real feisty little thing. So there's my daughter. She showed up. Yep, Country um, said preacher. So I seen Ice Age's video. Scary. Did I miss that one? You hadn't seen it. It, came, it went up yesterday. I was telling. Okay, because y'all gotta understand, we've been on vacation all week, and I've been playing catch up. And we, ha I ain't even been around the internet. He's so still working today. <laughs> I'm busting my tail every day, uh, but we're making a lot of progress. I'll say that. When canning sweet potatoes, do you add salt? No, I don't. Now, if you're going to use it with something, no, we, you want salt. No, we use a, a sugar water. I do a like light syrup. Yeah, like a light syrup. One cup of water to four cups of one cup, one of, cup sugar. of sugar to four cups of water. A yeah. light syrup. Yeah. All right, so tonight I thought we would do a question and answer. Since Danny hasn't been able to answer people all week, I wrote down a few um, questions that I saw just glancing today. And then um, when y'all have questions, I've wrote down some that I've seen already. But we're just going to go with it and see if he can tell y'all off the top of his head everything I asked him. Well, I don't have a clue what she's going to say. He hadn't so seen the I list. I hadn't seen the list. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I just ran in here a while ago from outside. So yeah, I mean, he's been doing a lot. I've uh, I, I, I've started to work this. Actually, the, these cool mornings we've had. What is this? Our third or fourth cool morning? Oh, I do want to say something about Ice Age Farmer and Grow Family Network on Realville. Uh, they're saying scary videos, y'all. I did see a part of some of these things. I'm just picking bits and pieces. But we've really, we've stayed at the cabin every night this week. Yep. Um, we've not had internet at all. No internet. Uh, it has been great. We run in here for maybe 30 minutes at lunch, watch a little bit. Just I get, don't. Well, you answer questions at, at some no. time. No, you hadn't even done that I ain't even week. done that this week. <laughs> he had I'm really. behind. I really, I haven't. I was like away from the internet and I said, oh my God, I'm having so much fun being away from the internet. Yeah. So... What we did, uh, I've been picking up bits and pieces of what's going on, but we also have had people sending us things. Oh, and, we have, uh, yeah. We, uh... No, I've got all that, but I'm okay. talking about sending emails. On oh, what's okay, going emails. On. Okay, what's and going so on? And so, Danny and I've been kind of talking about this some. But I have no clue what's happened in the world this week, other than the volcano across the water yeah, erupted. Yeah, kind of kept an eye on that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> banking. Uh, we yeah, have somebody, I, well, I did a video on banking over on Patreon, though. Not what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Ban you did one a long time ago. You ain't done No, that oh, I did one just here the other day. Yeah, a couple of three weeks talking ago. Talking about how they're going to close down people's accounts and all that kind no, of stuff? No, this is not that one. Okay. Remember, I told you earlier, he don't remember things now. <laughs> He's called, his mind's gone. He's got my mind. Um where they said anybody making over six hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah there's yeah. a proposal. There's a pro it isn't a law yet. It's just proposal. Yes, yeah, just a proposal that anybody making over six hundred dollars on their in their account in their account at any one given time. The banks have to report to the IRS. Yeah, the bank has to report it to the IRS as potential income. So anything, any check over six hundred dollars uh, going into your account, the IRS will be notified. Used to it was four thousand or five thousand. And now it's uh, they've got it. Uh, I thought it was ten thousand. Uh, well, it was ten thousand. But they keep dropping it. But they kept dropping it. Yes. So that was kind of scary because they're going to know everything. They're going to be reporting on every little. Okay, we've had about fifty questions go by here. When do uh, see one Shane Abbott? 
when do y'all plant your carrots? Well, it was supposed to be this week, but <laughs> due to the circumstances and so many things happened that wasn't supposed to happen, I did not get my ryegrass planted this week for my cows. I did not get the carrots planted this week for my cows. I didn't get a lot of things I wanted to get done done, but I got a ton of other things done that I didn't want to get done, if that makes Kinda, any sense. Yeah, right at the time we thought he was going to do one thing, something happened. We got a phone call, something else happened. It's always a phone call. It's a, it was a phone call for this, a phone call for that. We've got to do this, we've got to do that. I mean, it was like <laughs> our vacation was a staycation. And we weren't supposed to work a we lot. We weren't supposed to work a lot, but we ended up working more than we normally would have. We just didn't do videos and YouTube yeah. all week. I had the videos scheduled. I did all of them last weekend and scheduled them out. And uh, so we didn't have to worry too much. And uh, we'll answer questions. Y'all can put them back in a minute. I got some wrote down. But we got a lot of little projects done. Yeah. Okay, so somebody was wanting to know what were we planting this winter. What winter. are we planting this winter? Well, if I can get seeds. Now, this has been a big issue. We've been waiting for a month. On, They're supposed to be here, I thought, today. We thought they'd come person. today, but we, we ordered a... Uh, well, here in town, I went to all the feed stores. I wanted a pound of uh, a dwarf <laughs> Siberian kale because that's the best kale for our growing area here. And I usually plant about a quarter of an acre of it. And it's been on order for a month from these seed stores here in town. They can't get it. So we eventually went online. I think Ms. Wanda found it at some place uh, and ordered it. True Leaf. True Leaf, okay. T-R-U-E-L-E-A-F, True Leaf. So they said that if it wasn't here today, then possibly, what, Monday? Monday or Tuesday. Monday yeah. or Tuesday, yeah. And then we can start getting our cover crops in uh, for our uh, for our gardens because kale is what we use as a cover crop in our back garden because you know the wildlife loves it, uh, we love it. Uh, it's just it is good for the soil too. Okay, what broad fork do you have? The Easy Digger. Okay, and is it too late to plant uh, peas in Zone Eight? It depends on what you're calling peas. Are you talking about southern field peas? Or are you talking about like um, sugar snap peas or English peas? Or uh, if you're talking about southern field peas, you're you're pushing it. You're really pushing it. I mean, it's not, it's possible they could, they could mature, but you're pushing it. But if you're talking about English peas or sugar snap peas, you're probably about two weeks, three weeks early. Okay. Now, these are from videos that we put up this week. Um, somebody wanted to know, do we, did, do we shoot the deer? Do we shoot the deer? Because of the tracking video. Oh, we only shoot a deer if he's not standing still. <laughs> if he's not standing yeah, still? Yeah, if he's moving, I shoot him. Oh, well, in deer season. No, well, I don't care. Well, I mean, so far we have, as long we as I've been we, here, you've not killed one out of season. I haven't killed, I've been, I've been good with Miss Wanda. So I haven't far. killed one out of season. I used to, I just shoot that sucker anytime I seen him, but I've, I've tried to be, I've tried to be honest and, and legal. And, uh, now if they start eating up my garden and I, and I can't control them, I will shoot them. Uh, so yes, we do shoot deer. We just haven't. I don't hunt like I used to hunt. Let me put it that way. Okay. I hunt now for the support of it, but not now the sport of it. But now we were tracking, we did not shoot a deer. No, we didn't shoot a we deer. We were just we were looking, and actually he's been tracking and today. Actually, today, we thought the deer had quit coming into our property because there's no deer tracks in the peas. We keep, they're we not get, eating our peas. They're not eating our peas. we got the bone saws all around it. They're not messing with the peas. They're not messing with the sweet potatoes. And I told Wanda, I said, wow. I said, the deer's not even coming back on our property. Well, this evening I walked down to the head of the pond to um, because I saw some fish jumping out of the water and I wanted to see what was going on. And I walked down there and they've got a path wore down to the water at the end of the pond. They're getting water out. They're just not coming up to where the peas are. They're eating the acorns under all the other trees, but not coming yeah. to so the peas. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Okay. Somebody asked, because of the deer now, why don't we have a dog or a cat? I don't know that y'all want us to go there, but... <laughs> well... Cats I can't stand. 
Okay, I never have been able to stand a cat. They cats just tolerate you. They carry so many diseases. And I'm not a cat and, person. And Wanda's not a cat person, and neither am I. I don't want that thing touching me. I don't want. I don't want him around me because he gets hair everywhere. And a dog. During a time of crisis, uh, let's say uh, you, uh, there's an LCE happens or uh, so. Uh, 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 Coronal mass ejection happens, an EMP happens, or anything like that, and the world goes crazy, and you have a dog. There's a couple of things that's going to happen. Uh, in teaching survival, I used to teach this. First of all, you got to feed that animal. Um, if you don't feed him, he'll go to wandering to everybody's places. Secondly, if you're trying to hide from somebody and somebody's trying to find you, that dog's going to give you away. Especially these barking dogs yeah. that everybody has. And and thirdly. If you're trying to keep your location a secret and nobody wanting to know where you're at, if you're hiding or something like that, a dog's going to bark. He's going to give you away. So, and then, fourthly, one that I know for a fact, a dog costs about $100 a month. Yeah. <laughs> By the time you buy feed, do the vet bills, and all this kind of stuff that a dog needs, it's about 100 bucks a month. And... Uh, we decided we didn't want to spend $100 a month on an animal that was not going to benefit us. As a matter of fact, it's going to be a, a problem in the future. And we had one. Well, actually, we had two. Danny had one when I came out here, yeah. and he was 13 years old. And when he passed, Danny did not want another dog. He had had him for so long, and he was like a friend. And so don't jump on his case. He don't like dogs. Yeah, he... I like dogs. I love it. Who was his I, favorite? Ruf, Rufus was my favorite dog. And before him, I had one of the best tracking dogs for, for deer or anything like that you've ever seen. I mean, I don't I don't dislike dogs. Don't get me wrong. I love a good dog. And then we uh, he wanted a cur. And so I found a cur. We went and got it. And it ended up being super hyperactive you couldn't do much with him i couldn't hardly handle him and he got away from me one day ran off and um we decided that's it i made a bad choice the dog yeah. was he, he was like a what do you call them the fast dogs what are they called a greyhound greyhound he was he, like, he's a, greyhound. like a greyhound he, run. he started running he was gone he could clear a fence and not even think about it yeah so Okay, that's why we don't have dogs and cats. Now, okay, someone asks us, what diseases do cats carry? What diseases do they not carry? They carry all types of worms. Uh, my, one of my daughters got scratched by a cat when she was young. Ended up having a severe infection from it because cats are always eating rats and stuff like that that carry diseases and fleas and things. Uh, and, and it's just... Uh, it, it, I end up having to put her in a, you know, to the doctor's office and have all kind of medication work done to her and stuff. And uh, I just, I don't want a cat around. Okay. I don't have anything against cats. I just don't want one. In, in the video, too, of one of the videos, somebody thought we had a missing cow and they wanted to know, did we butcher one of our cows? They said, uh, are you missing a cow and did you butcher one? No, we did not butcher no cows. And this um, week we'll show you all the cows. Yeah, this week you'll see them all. It's just that we've we got had three to, in a separate place. We had to move three to one field and keep them there, get them away from their mamas because they just would not stop nursing. And I don't have a head squeezer to lock one down to put the uh, the the nose thing in there to keep them from nursing and stuff like that. So. Our best bet is just to separate them on the other side of the barn where they can't see their mother. Now, they can hear them, but they can't see them. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't butcher the pig, the cows. Um, all right, this is to deal with the deer. Why not invest in a deer fence, put up two huge fence, tall fences, or an electric fence? Because it's just more money. I'm a, you can ask Wanda, I'm a miser. Um, well, they were saying because we spent money on everything else around here, why not put all that up? Because it's not worth it. We don't have that many deer here. Uh, if a deer does come in and he gets to be a problem, I'll just shoot him. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a lot easier for me to buy a bullet than it is to spend thousands of dollars on fences. Now, I don't mind if they eat some things out here, but... If they begin to wipe a garden out, then it's time for me to take action, and I'll do something about it. And I have contacted the Game and Fish Commission, 
and have uh, had them come out and look at mm -hmm. the situation and uh, applied for a depredation license and things like that. And, I mean, we have went through the legal routes of doing it. Okay. The other one, uh, can you protect the bone sauce by, like, putting it in plastic jugs and, you know, putting it over it or something to keep the I, rain off Keep the of rain it. from washing it off? Yeah, that was a biggie with a lot of people. I, I don't actually know that... Uh, you know, like you took a plastic I know what you're, I know, yeah, I under, understand bottom. exactly what you're talking about. Uh, it might would work. I mean, to me, this is something I'm actually thinking about, is taking a drink bottle and cutting the bottom off of the drink bottle and screwing the cap back on it and punching a hole through the top of it and running the string through it and putting the bone sauce on the inside of that drink bottle up under the bottom. And that way the rain would stay off of it. But I don't know how well the scent would radiate away from it if it's like that. You know what I mean? That's, that's uh, it's, the big... It's just something we're going to have to work with to see. Uh, <laughs> Romans 12, 18. Shoot them! Shoot them, Elizabeth! Shoot them! Now, y'all didn't think I knew what that was, but I used to watch uh, hunting alligators on, on uh, TV when I stayed with my mom and now. Okay, so... Um... This one, couldn't we plant all our peas in the greenhouses instead of putting them in the fields? Why don't we just put everything in the greenhouses and let the deer roam? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> first of all, we don't have enough room in our greenhouses to plant the peas. And if we did, we couldn't save the seed from them because we plant several different varieties and peas have to be separated out uh, in order to be able to save the uh, seeds from them. Do you uh, somebody, have any nut trees on the? We have <laughs> probably have a thousand nut trees here. I mean, they're everywhere. We have hickory nuts, uh, oak trees, about, about five different types chestnuts. of oak trees, chestnuts, pecans, uh, Chinese sawtooth oaks. I mean, water chestnuts. I mean, acorns galore. Acorns galore. You name them, we've got nuts, and that's why the deer come in here. Uh, Cindy wants to know what is bone sauce. Bone sauce is a uh, uh, well, Jim and I just put it up. You contact Mr. Billy on um, Permapasture Farms, uh, and you can purchase the bone sauce from him. He makes it himself, and it keeps away. And I will say this. <laughs> we have persimmon trees back here on our property that every year I set video cameras up, and we, get, we watch coons and possums and all that kind of stuff come and eat those persimmons, uh, foxes and stuff like that, because we got lots of footage of all that. Wanda... <laughs> <laughs> tied some rags in that persimmon tree and put bone sauce on them. And I rubbed the and, stick on the tree. And rubbed tree. the stick on the tree. Those persimmons are covering the ground under that tree. We have not seen a coon. We've not seen a possum. We've not seen anything uh, around those trees since she done that. So the bone sauce does keep all that stuff away. Now, I it guess. doesn't keep a squirrel away, but it, the coons and the possums and the foxes... Deer, nothing's messing with them. Okay, um, do we eat acorns and do we make acorn flour? Somebody uh, wanted me to make a video and I said no. We know how to do it. Uh, we know how to uh, boil the acorns down and get the tannins out of them and then dry them and then grind them into a, a powder. Uh, we have, matter of fact, we have some chestnut uh, flour and all that kind of stuff here. We have almond flour and stuff and we can make acorn flour. It's just that it's it's just not until we have to we're not going to let's put yeah, it that way. I'm not into doing extra work when I don't have to. Does Southern Mississippi have black bears? Yes, we have black bears here. The Game and Fish Commission has reintroduced them to our area. They were really um, prevalent back when Teddy Roosevelt was yeah president. He came here and hunted. Yeah, black bear. Um, our neighbors have seen them quite regularly i personally have not ever seen one here i've seen their tracks but i've never actually saw one okay um do we pollinate hand pollinate in the greenhouse yes we do hand pollinate in the greenhouse but for the most part we don't only it's only early in the year when it's cool we open uh, the doors any other time we leave the doors open during the day and uh we let the uh the insects come in and do the pollinating during the day we close them up airtight at night so that the uh, the moths at night that lay the eggs that do a lot of the damage to our vegetables and stuff are, cannot get in during the night. 
Okay, um, how did you get rid of the rat in the greenhouse? I don't know why. I didn't say why in my video. Why? How? I know, I didn't say that. But people kept asking, and I don't understand why people want to know how he got rid of it, but do you want to tell them how you got rid of the rat? I poisoned him. Uh, Took a with... shovel and toted him out. <laughs> I, uh, he was smelling real well. Yeah, I, here at the local feed store, you can buy these bars of rat poison. And I, I put a bar of rat poison in there. To me, that's the most economical way to go. Um, it, it, they come to it automatically. It's got a peanut butter taste to it. They come to it. And it's got the same thing that people who uh, take blood thinners, uh, like warfin and stuff like that. That's what rat poison is anyway. It's just is, is warfin or um, some of the other blood thinners out there because that, a rat just eats so much of it till he just bleeds to death internally. I mean, he overdoses on it. All right, somebody says, what do you look for when buying a tractor? I've missed a whole bunch. I'm seeing a whole bunch. What of do I look for when I'm buying a tractor? Depends on what you need the tractor for. If you have a, up to 10 to 15, 20 acres, you don't need anything over a 25 horsepower tractor. Okay, it's coming back. Here we go. Oh, it came back. Maybe if I just shut up and don't say nothing for a few minutes, maybe it'll turn green. Look, it worked. You should have just shut up and didn't. He said some things he probably shouldn't have. I said have. some things that I probably shouldn't have. And, um, uh, could be the bears. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now uh, let's go to something that maybe let's go to YouTube something, likes. Carrots. Yeah, something YouTube's not going to jump on my back about. Carrots. You see how they guys, when I started talking about a certain thing, they automatically, uh, timed us out. Timed for us out for a few <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Throw this into an algorithm. All right, carrots. Uh, this woman said her carrots are up about close to an inch. What does she fertilize them with? Or what does she do? They should have been fertilized before they were up an inch. You don't really fertilize carrots once they get up. And, well, I think what she was asking was, should she fertilize them? Because they they seem to be at uh, up this tall and just sitting there. Well, if, just be patient. If you do fertilize them, you need to use a liquid fertilizer, something like, uh, and I hate to say this, but you really need something like miracle Grow or something like that to kind of give them a boost. Because nine times out of ten, once they get to that point and they just kind of sit there, a couple of things is happening. Either the weather's not conducive for them, it's too cool, or you just don't have enough nitrogen to, to kick them on out of the soil. And you're probably going to need to give them just a little bit of nitrogen um, in order to be able to, uh, you know, get them started off okay. How do you know when to pick carrots? Arizona Online is asking, uh, you usually go by the number of days that that variety, um, you know, gets, you know, to be full grown. And if you don't know how many days it's been, usually I'll run my finger around the top of the carrot. And if it's at least three quarters of an inch in diameter, I'll pull it up. And if it's got little tiny hairs all over it, like little tiny roots on it, it's been in the ground too long. You need to get them out of the ground. Permapasture, uh, we should have been at 200 uh, six months ago. We were all, we, we hit 180 something probably six months ago. And all of a sudden we get 3,000 subscribers a month and we get like 500 listed. Uh, it'll show in one place that how many we get per month and then our numbers never go up. So we've been sitting at 188, 192. I think we've made it to 195. Something like that. It took us six months to get yeah. 7,000 subscribers, and we get 3,000 to 4,000 subscribers per month. So you you do you, the you math. You do the math. I mean, they're 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 holding us back on purpose. Yeah. Uh, Ray Ferguson says, "How are the pigs doing?" Uh, they're <laughs> this and that is. They're the spoiled pigs. rotten, and they're up to about 100 pounds now, so they're actually growing like weeds. All right, somebody wants to know, is there a way to collect rainwater from a high tunnel? Like actually, ours? yes, there is. Uh, there is a video out there from uh, oh, the University of Montana or Wyoming, one of them, it actually shows how to put rain gutters on a high tunnel 
in order to be able to capture the water and have the big rain, rain barrels at the end of the high tunnel out there. If you just Google it, it should come up. I have found it several times and actually have considered doing it myself. Does the garden rose direction make a difference like east to west, north to south when you're plowing? The only difference, the only, th the only thing about garden rose is they need to be done uh, based on your land. Uh, they need to be run uh, level. I'm trying to figure out the correct words to use. We use a transit to set ours anyway to right. make sure that they run level with the contour of the land. Evelyn says, encourage people to leave a comment and to leave a comment or a reply to someone else's comment. Others are doing that to get past the shadow banning nonsense. Okay, so make sure y'all leave comments and reply to other people's comments on this video and all other videos. Uh, YouTube has been unsubscribing me. I had to subscribe to you several times. It seems... The only it only happens to the homestead and channels. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we get that all the time. Uh, people that I've watched for several years don't even show up in my feed anymore. People I unsubscribe to because I don't even like them. I end up getting them in my feeds all the time. So I don't know. Uh, David said he gets his high tunnel this Wednesday. All right. It's always glad to see people get that. Debbie uh, says she enjoyed my chat with Miss Sleepy. If y'all have not been seeing my chats, they're over on Crazy Days. I did Gemini Homestead, and I did a chat last week. I had, It was a two-part because we got to talking a lot. Oh. So go check it out. Um, let's see, one more question. The best way to store seeds, because this lady was given some a box of seeds, and she wants to know the best way to store seeds. Okay, in a cool, dry dark place. Um, it doesn't matter if it's in plastic. It doesn't matter if it's in paper or, or whatever, glass or anything like that. Uh, glass is the best because rats can't get in there. But it just keep them in a cool, dry, dark place. I mean, we use, a, uh, we use plastic totes. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's been working fine for us. Well, and explain the ones that do need to go into the freezer for a short period of time in case she has some of those. The only seeds that you need to put in freezers are peas, beans, corn. Uh, really, it's just peas, beans, and corn. Because all of them have worms in the seeds or... Uh, weevils. I'll get it in just a minute. Uh, in the seeds... And they'll eat the seeds up. And if you can freeze them for about two weeks, usually you'll kill any of those insects in there and you won't have any problems with your seeds. You can take them out of the freezer and, and keep them any way you want to. It's just that corn, we usually leave corn in the freezer permanently. We don't even take it out. Okay, I just bought seeds for next year. Will they be old? No. Uh, Fontaine, thank you so much. Thank you, Fontaine. Much. Uh Seeds on a peas and beans and things like that will usually last around five to ten years without any problems. Uh, things like tomatoes and other things like that, they'll usually last three to four years without any problems. So I wouldn't worry about it if you plan on planting in the next three to four years. All right, what do you mean by curing potatoes before storing? What do I do? Well, it depends on if you're talking about the red Irish potatoes or if you're talking about sweet potatoes. They both need to cure about two weeks uh, in a cool, dry place. It makes the, the, the skin on the outside of them uh, gets to be kind of thick and um, a little bit tougher. And the starches in them turn to sugars. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you do a potato fresh, uh, one and I have done a couple of fresh ones just to eat as soon as we dig them out of the garden. They're loaded with starch. The water turns milky looking and stuff like that. And it's better to let one cure and let the starches turn to sugar. All right, beets. Is it a good cover crop? Uh, no, beets are not a good cover crop. All right. Uh, Quarter acre garden. What size tractor do I need? Anything up to a 25 horsepower is fine. You don't need anything over a 25 horse. What vegetables do you start now on your homestead for winter? Uh, we're fixing to start our onions uh, from seeds. Uh, in order to have them ready to plant by the end of November. 
We'll uh, kales, bro uh, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all this kind of stuff, collards. All that stuff needs to be started from seeds now in order to have it up. Now, this is in zone eight uh, to have it up ready to go in time. Somebody wants to know, can you can potatoes with the skin zone? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But I would do it within the first two weeks of harvesting them. After that, they start curing. The, the skins get tough. And you can do it, but they're they're just not as good. I would harvest them and can them within two weeks. Uh, the Swafford Homestead said seed peanuts need to be used within a year. That's true if you don't put them in the freezer. If you put them in the freezer, they'll last for five years. I mean, we've got peanuts in the freezer now. Uh, it's been in there for four or five years. We take them out, and they still come up just fine. All right, so can you plant dry peas and beans that you buy in the grocery store? Yes, you can. You can plant them, and most of them do just fine. In fact, in my high tunnel, I have black-eyed peas. Danny planted black-eyed peas in the front garden a few years ago from the grocery store, and then we saved seeds, and I the saved seeds is what I planted in my high tunnel, and I'm harvesting peas now. Can you plant Irish potatoes now for zone 8b in georgia uh you can but i don't know if they have time to mature before you get a frost okay they meant turnips are turnips a good cover crop uh yes turnips is a good cover crop they, yes they said beets but they meant turnips yeah turnips is a really good cover crop because i mean you can feed them to your animals or you can eat them yourself have you noticed the spooning in the persimmon seeds? Uh, no, I actually have not opened up a persimmon seed yet this year and even looked, to be honest with you. I just haven't had time. Okay. I need to show some of our stuff here. Um, the sweet potatoes are looking milky. Is that okay? Yes, that's the starches. That's the starches in them. Let me get some of this stuff while I'm here. Let me show this first and then I'll... Okay. Yeah, we got a few things that people have sent. We want to, you know, recognize them. We might have mentioned some of this last week, but the whole feed was horrible. Okay, so. let me answer this. How long do we feed out our pigs? It depends. We usually do it for like five to six months, but um, the way these are growing, it may the way not these last are growing, it may not be that long. Okay, let me see here. I mean, you can hold that one up. Okay, this is the first one we got this week. It's from Sandra. And I've already read it. Wanda has done read it. She says it's a fantastic <laughs> book. I was, yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. So I read this one. I, I got interested in it and didn't put it down. That was one of them. Uh, Jan from Not a Real Farm sent this one. Now this came on the day we were making bone broth. I mean, what 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 are the kind of timing that was perfect? Yeah. And I've got uh, a video coming up September the thirtieth. I'm part of the Soup Timber collab and I was making the bone broth and I mentioned this book because it come while I was doing bone broth. Uh, Jan sent this book, Native American Medicinal Plants. I hadn't got time to uh, really go through this one yet. I've been reading the bone broth but I hadn't started on this one yet but this has a lot of information a lot on of all information. kinds of medicinal yes. plants. Uh, thank you Twisted Ponies. I really appreciate that. So thank you Jan. Let me get some more. <laughs> yeah, we got actually got several things here in the last couple of. It's actually been like a week and a half. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little while, mainly for my birthday. All right, that was from. Look at this one. This is pretty neat. Well, I love that. This is really beautiful. Kim. I mean, I mean, look at this, hand painted. Kim sent that. It's just it's it's and really good. It has good. a light in it. It has a candle in it. Is it, is, it, is it a candle? Yeah, well, it's the little kind you on a battery. Yes, yeah, a battery-operated one. Done a fantastic work with the art on it. It's really nice. Turn this on at night. It's like a night light. Thank you, Georgia Garden Girl. They've been talking about my hair. Look. Oh. Y'all, I'm 60 years old and not much gray hair. This is original. That's already. original. She doesn't color her hair. Okay. Um, this was from Nanny Joyce. This is Miss Lippy from Gemini Homestead's mother-in-law this is an apron and i wore it some the other day while i was doing some stuff it's got some big deep pockets so if y'all interested in deep pocket aprons contact jim and i homestead and tell nanny you want one um 
This, I don't know if Danny can show y'all this one or not. It, this came from Olight. Yeah, and not often do I get things from uh, companies that this we is a, This is a company that we do uh, reviews on, and they actually sent this because of Miss Wanda's birthday. Now, I thought that was, even though they're a, I call it a Chinese-based company. Yeah, and I, it took me a while because I kept looking at it, and I told Danny, I said, it looks like it spells something. And I said, I don't want to put something on my wall that I don't know what it spells. And he turned around and looked at it, show what it says, and see if they get Let's it. Let's see if y'all can figure out. Let me hold part of it. Uh, Throw this away. Now, see, I see it now. You see it now that you know what it is. Oh, like, let me have that thing. You on? <laughs> y'all see that? Uh, the flashlight company actually sent this. One that didn't have no clue what it was. And I looked at it. I told her, I said, it spells something. Look at it. And I couldn't get it. She I, could I not. I figure that last letter was an A. It says Wanda. And they did it with uh, with vegetables and stuff like that. And I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good that they yeah, did that. Yeah, see, they were getting it. I just didn't get it. I, I got the A on the end. And I was so close to it, I couldn't see. But when you hold it up away from you, you can see it. Yeah. I thought it was really nice of them to send. Pretty nice of Chinese people. To send that because they like working with me, you know, whatever. And I hadn't even done an Olight review in a while. Uh, we probably will before long because they'll have a... Uh, they'll have a promotion. They'll have a, a Black Friday sale, I'm sure. Yeah, um, let me I see. can't tie it back now. See who sent this. I have, roll, Karen. I have to roll it the other way. Yeah. Karen sent this. These are the Harvest Right uh, mats that go in my trays. She sent me a set of those, so thank you, Karen. Um, I'm planning on freeze drying some stuff in the next few days. Um, and then I think her name is Drew, but I forgot. I, we may have showed this, but if not, I don't remember. I got some mullein seed. And that's a lot. If y'all know nothing about mullein, that's a lot of seeds. That's a lot of seeds there. That's a lot, a lot of seeds. And uh, I think her name is Drew. Let me look and see. Yeah, Miss uh, Drew sent them. Starla says, can I, Danny Wanda, can I send you some seeds? Uh, yeah, you can send us some seeds. I don't. I mean, if I don't plant them right off, don't, don't get heartbroken or nothing because I actually do a lot of research. When someone sends me the seeds, uh, I do research on them. And I want to find out what they are, what what they consist of, you know, are they heirloom, are they, or what are they? You yeah. Know? All right. So that took care of most most stuff. Now, have we had any fruit trees produced in a year? Yes. Uh, All kinds. We, we had a lot of them. Uh, our Barbados cherry tree produced the first year we planted it. The, uh, the peach, peach trees. trees. Uh, our dwarf. Uh, Empress peaches, they produced the first year that we planted them. I mean, so we have several. Uh, our key lime uh, produced the first year we planted it. Our lemon produced the first year we planted it. Our kumquats produced the first year we planted it. So we have several trees. Yeah. Do we have bird houses on our property, and do you eat certain bird other than chickens? We, uh... We eat doves uh, during dove season. If I decide to shoot a few, we do eat those. Uh, but And quail. If I decide to shoot a quail, I'll call one up and shoot him. Uh, but mainly it's just a dove, quail, or uh, chicken or something like that. Or turkeys, wild turkeys, we'll eat them. We don't eat anything else because most of them eat roadkill. Yeah. And most of them are against the law to shoot anyway, especially songbirds. Yeah, we were told that. We were told that by the Game and Fish Commission. <laughs> yeah. Um, Danny, if you stored meal that e the eggs have hatched and are little black bugs now, can the bugs be strained out of the meal and used? Apparently, I neglected to freeze this meal before storing. Uh, you... I don't know. You can freeze it and kill them all, but... I don't know that you can get them out. You might sift it or through a real fine screen and you might get some of them out. I'll say that. You'll end up with a flower. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not harvested any wild lettuce yet. It's still growing, still doing good. Uh, and somebody wanted to know, do we use herbs for medicine? 
I studied herbs 25 years ago. Yes, I am all about herbs. I have all types of herbs here. Yes. I have any kind I need for anything. Do we use them 24-7? No. I have them available for when we need them. And I have books galore on how to use them. I know what I'm looking at. And uh, I actually studied to be a natural health consultant for a while. And... People don't want to be healthy, so I kind of quit. <laughs> yeah. I kept uh, my studies up, but I didn't I didn't help people after that. The best nursery to purchase things from, we bought, we go from Grower Solutions first. Uh, Gurney's, we've, produced, we've bought some stuff from Gurney's. We've had good luck with both of those now, and um, uh, they've done real well. What's a, a herb that has purple flowers and smells like licorice? That would be... Um, not tarragon. Is it tarragon? Tarragon. I was going to say, it, I was thinking cardamom, but not cardamom. What's no. the other? Well, it's tarragon, I can tell okay. you. It's it going to be tarragon. Be. Uh, do we, we eat squirrels? Yes, we eat squirrels. Well, technically, I hadn't eaten any. One that does. I love squirrels. If, if it's cooked right now, I, I usually end up having to cook the squirrels. Yeah. Uh, any tips on clay soil? We have sand soil. Any tips on clay soil? Lots of compost, lots of organic matter. Don't put sand in it like everybody else says because if you put sand in it, you're just going to make concrete. <laughs> Somebody wants to know, do you use herbs for medicine? He uses peppermint. I use Quite peppermint religion. religiously. <laughs> uh, that's, that's his biggest go-to right now is peppermint. All right. Um, Let me think. What else have we done? Um, this week, oh. Oh, you got to show the rest of your pictures? I only have one. I didn't get a lot of pictures. Okay. This is one, one of the little projects that Danny done this week was to, uh, put a sealer on both these chairs. These are ladder back chairs. When we bought the glider, it, on crazy days, I have a video up on the glider that Danny and I found that was about a 30 year old glider still in the box. We also bought these two chairs, and he put a sealer on them, and they go perfect with my pecan table. Yes, these chairs worked out a lot. Matter of fact, the chairs we're sitting in right now was the chairs that was at that table. But we wanted something that actually fit in with the theme of the cabin just a little bit more. And these ladder back chairs uh, really did, because there's a great history behind the ladder back chairs. And uh, we wanted to kind of... We want to kind of keep that theme going in the in the cabin. Renata, yes, you can plant carrots, collards, and all that stuff right yes, now. Yes, you can plant all that right now. We're going to plant carrots and it may be, next week. It may be anise. Uh, is a little bit more bit more like licorice. It now that be. I think about it, it might be anise. I know tarragon has that smell and taste to it, but it might be an ease. Do you make your own pepper for seasoning? We're working on it. We're working on Somebody it. Somebody sent me two peppercorn plants, and they're growing like crazy. They've got the little bitty things started out on them. I've also got two or three sprouts off of it already, and I've got those going, and they're growing well. So we're working on growing our own pepper. What's the best pea sheller besides my hands? Uh, it's called a tailor. Uh, pea sheller. It's uh, they're about what well, they run about three hundred dollars for one of them. I know it's kind of expensive. We have one, but and it's great. You just adjust it for the thickness of the peas, and I mean, as fast as you can shove them in it, it'll. Uh, and it's better if you wash them first. I mean, and wet them. Do we irrigate any crops during a drought without any kind, without any kind of irrigation systems? It's called a hose, and you run it down and water it. We, we pull a hose usually. down and we water it. And only in the greenhouses. We don't do the gardens usually. We did the gardens a couple of years ago. One time up here in the front, or twice, we watered the garden. We just put the water hose at the end of the row and let it run down the that row. That was last year when we had absolutely no water for, what, three months? Yeah. It was horrible. Uh, what size is the table in the cabin? Do you know? You remember it is 32 <laughs> inches wide. Yeah, 32 inches wide by 42 inches long. It's just big enough for me and Wanda. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I made it to fit that spot. It's and a it barely fits. It's a custom homemade pecan table. And there's a video on that. 
We do actually have a video yep. on it. Yes, we do. Yeah. And there's a video. You can go back and search a uh, table at Deep South Homestead. It should be there. I forgot. Farmhouse table, I think is what I called it. What about growing vanilla bean? What do you know about that? That I don't have that. I, we the, Most of that's grown in Mexico. We don't have... Uh, we might put in the greenhouse. I just don't have a, have a plant. <laughs> I don't... Twisted Pony says, I want a pepper plant. <laughs> Uh, what is Jadam? Jadam is a uh, Korean organic method of growing vegetables. I was going to do a whole series on it. Um, I told them on Patreon why I couldn't do it. I don't have time now. I think that the time is too short to actually go through the whole book. You can go online. You can order the book. There's two books. Or you can go online and watch all the videos. There's like 30 videos or something, I think, online. Yeah. They um, explain um, the system really well, and the books are awesome. Um, they do not teach any religious stuff. Some people asked that question before. No, they do not. They just teach their system. He makes a comment in the, in the introduction, but... Don't worry about that. That's not what they're teaching. They're teaching people how to grow low cost or ultra low cost. And um, the books are amazing. Um, Romans twelve eighteen says, plant lives matter. Do I plant my rows east and west or north and south? It depends on the contour of your land. It has nothing to do with the direction. It's just all about the contour of the land. Uh, Cindy says, the Jadon books are hard to get. Yes, that's another reason I... I I knew as soon as I found this that people was going to flock to it, and they are flocking to it so fast. And uh, too, they um, the production and getting them over here in English because yeah. they're producing them now in many languages. Yes, make sure if you buy one, it's in English language and not yeah. in another language. Because they're producing them in lots of languages now, because it is an easy way to have fertilize and to grow plants. Um, that really doesn't cost you a whole lot. You have most everything on your um, place usually. There's two or three items you might have to order, but other than that, it's pretty easy. What is Mr. Billy's ordering address? Uh, you'll just have to go over to his YouTube channel, Permapasture Farms, and, it, and you should go to the About page or somewhere in there, I'm sure, and you should be able to find it there. Uh, Mr. Ray said his wife's getting better. Um, now, I'm not sure. We have two of the Jadam books. We have the Ultra Low Cost Farming and the Pest and, what's the, pest and Diseases, I think the other one's called. Um, One Bright Light says, is there a website or a book you recommend to teach a newbie about gardening? It would be the Jadam books. I mean, to me, are the Vegetable Gardener's Bible. That's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, the or, Vegetable Gardener's Bible has a lot of good information. There's a lot of good information in that one. Or, um, or, or Carla Emery's uh, Encyclopedia of Gardening. I mean, that's if another good one. If we hit 200,000... I'm giving away one of Carla Emery's books. Somebody sent me one to have at the gathering, and I've been holding on to it because I thought we'd hit 200,000 six months ago, and uh, we hadn't. So somebody's going to get a Car Carla Emery book. I do have that. Okay. Stashed. So we do have one we're going to give away. Somewhere, I, if I can find it. When we reach 200,000 subscribers. If Wanda can find it. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember where I put it. Well... <laughs> he knows me and my putting things away. I'm I cleaned up in here so we could move in here. Like, it was laying in here, and uh, it was being say I thought it was, but it was. It's put somewhere safe. We'll find it. <laughs> okay, another thing. Um, we put up four um, podcasts so far. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if we're on iTunes yet or not. You have to go check and somebody go run check and tell me, are we on iTunes? Um, I don't know if I'm doing everything for iTunes yet. I don't know if I've got everything in line. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing for iTunes. 
but um, somebody see if you can find Deep South Homestead on your iTunes. <laughs> I don't know. But it's on about 15 different podcast uh, servers or platforms. So if you don't like Spotify, there's umpteen dozen others. Just check out podcast places. Jamie Fortenberry says, Danny, did you ever figure out anything about the worms eating the sawtooth leaves? Yeah, they were, they're an oak worm. Oh, they, um, we are on iTunes, yes. Okay, yeah, the, the worms were just, they're, they're called oak worms. They get into oak trees and everything else. Uh, Jan wants to know about your shirt. Show her what your shirt says. Stupid <laughs> should hurt. Now, Jan, that's the shirt you need. <laughs> you can get this from Zach's An American Homestead. Just type in An American Homestead and go to Zach's page. Zach's a friend of ours. You can get the shirt through him. And when I saw he had these shirts up, I had to have one because, guys, I really do believe stupid should hurt. I mean, I really believe that. And if we, if it was, if it was true, the world would be hurting today, especially the executive part of it. Okay, um, Mike, um, on Spotify, type in Deep South Homestead podcast, and it should bring it up because when we type in Deep South Homestead, it brings up the one he did with. Um, Cuz Strickland on a fistful of dirt, and then it brings up our podcast, or it should. Yeah. If you have um, trouble. What is the height of our high tunnels? They're about 13 to 14 feet in the middle, uh, eight foot on the sides, and we plant anything. Uh, we got tons of videos on our high tunnels. You can go look at those videos, and, and we got anything you can imagine in them. Yeah. Type in. Um, Deep South Homestead, high tunnels, and it should pull up our high tunnels. Best way to care for a fig tree over the winter? It depends on where you live at, but mainly you want to keep about a six to eight inch thick mulch of leaves or compost under the bottom of the tree because fig trees, all their roots lay right on the surface of the ground and they're bad about freezing. So do that. Uh, the I am of me, I'm trying to figure out how to get the podcast to my website. When I figure that out, then you can go straight to my website, DeepSouthHomestead.com, and what listen, listen, I'm used to saying watch, listen to the podcast, but I've not had time yet to figure out how to get it to my website. When I do that, then there will be an option for that. Okay. All right. I bought a new metal sign. For the gate, and it says stupid people. No stupid No stupid people. people beyond this point. Hey, I agree. I agree 100%. I'm going to try and do a video, and I'm not sure if it's going to be on Deep South or if it'll be on Crazy Days on some things that we've done this week. Um, it'll be uh, just a bunch of short clips that I took. Some of the pictures, some of it clips, just kind of documenting what we did a little bit this week. But we did dig sweet potatoes, so the sweet potato video will be up, and I'm sure he'll do porch time, and uh, not sure what else we got going mm -hmm. on. <laughs> uh, rutabagas, do you grow them? Yes, we do grow rutabagas ever so often. They're very easy to grow. They grow in the fall. Um, Danny, have you made bacon from a Boston butt? Uh, no, Ray, I haven't. Um, I know you can... There's several different things you can do with a Boston butt, but I've never made bacon with one of them. Georgia Garden Girl, I'm not sure if my uh, wild lettuce has a weeping white on the inside or not. I've not paid any attention. I'll have to look at it and see. Do you recommend starting a food forest or is it a waste of time? Oh, no, I recommend a food forest. I highly recommend. That's called permaculture, to be honest with you. I highly recommend that. Do we grow herbs in your kitchen? I don't grow any in the kitchen. I have herbs all over the place outside. I have an herb garden. Uh, I do have videos on the herb garden. You can go back and we're in the process of redoing some of the herb garden because we took it up when we built the she shed. We re, were revamping a po portion of it and putting a new fence. Uh, Lori uh, wants to know, should she mulch her uh, asparagus in zone five? I would mulch asparagus we mulch, we mulch our asparagus, and we're in zone eight. So yeah, I would say yes. It's definitely, um, you know, is is really good to do that. 
Yeah. Um, Urban White Buffalo Farm is saying that um, butt bacon is really good. So I've never done it. Yeah. Let's see. And for all those that see, I'm, I'm like Joe Mama. Joe Mama's telling the truth there. What? If it if it doesn't have the white weeping out of it, it may not be wild lettuce. Yeah, I have because tried wild lettuce that. is supposed to have the little little spiny Milky things. stuff. Well, it's supposed to have the spiny things all under the bottoms of the leaves, and when you break one of them off of it, the milky substance is supposed. Actually, that's what is what you're that's supposed to be using. That's what you're supposed to be using. I've got to test mine. Mine is finally. I've been leaving it alone. It's finally. I think there's two or three plants, and it's growing out, and it's getting kind of bushy. So it's the it's been so hot and even though it's in the high tunnel, it still was having issues. But it, now it's beginning to look pretty decent. So I didn't want to mess with it yet, but I will check it and see. Um, have you heard of the man that does a grass-fed garden? I found it interesting. He cuts grass and then sore heads it under his vegetables. Uh, yeah. Um. I'm not sure if it's Jerusa or, 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 or... It's probably Jerusa. Or, probably Jerusa. Um, yes, uh, I have actually done that myself, and it actually works very good. It loads the plants up with nitrogen and puts a lot of, the, uh, a lot of minerals back into the soil. So, yes, it is a very good thing to do. Just make sure you put the grass before it gets seeds on it. All right, Doug says he planted blackberries, and he's had no berries. When do they usually produce? Blackberries usually produce the first year or the second year. Some berries produce the first year. Some produce on the second year cane. So it depends on which variety and you have. it's usually in the spring. Yeah, they usually produce in the now, spring. Now, we have blackberries in our high tunnel producing now, but that's kind of unusual. Kim wants to know, am I going to do a deer hunting video? I, I might. It just depends. We did one a couple of years ago. We done one a couple of years ago. Uh, we might do another one. Who knows? All right, do you grow it in the shade? I'm not sure what it is. So, urban white buffalo, you have to tell me what it is. Um, can you can the purple berries from poke salad be used for medicinal herbs? Probably, uh, but I would I research would, the heck out I of it. I would research the heck out of it. Most people use them for dyes, to dye stuff with. I don't know that I would actually eat them. Now, you can eat the poke salad plant when it's young. You can eat the tops out of it, but there's a process you got to go through about boiling it and straining it and boiling it and straining it, and then you about, you've got to acquire a taste for it. Um, yes, I did see Ice Age Farmer's video earlier, and Danny hasn't seen it yet, but, yeah, we knew he was, he's taken everything off YouTube. You can still find his videos on his website, though. He's not taking his website down. He's just tired of dealing with YouTube. Yeah. A lot of people are getting that way. Just saying. Um, what kind of fertilizer can you use on elderberries? Um, they have them in small pots. Elderberries likes to be in a damp, wet place. So um, I don't know that they need a lot of fertilizer. Just make sure you keep them where it's damp and wet. And Mr. John's right. Jadam talks on grass and putting clippings under the row covers and the garden mm -hmm. rows and stuff like that. That's one of the Jadam methods. And I've been using that method for years. And it works. Just make sure you don't put grass seeds with it. Just grass. And we've been doing a lot of the leaves. Taking the leaves off stuff. Especially with my Cherokee Tan Pumpkins. Y'all, they produced one time, and I started taking all the limbs and um, the stems and the leaves off and throwing them down in it, and they've just been composting back in it, and it's feeding my Cherokee tans. I have not added any fertilizer to them in two or three months, and they're just hanging with pumpkins. I probably have more this time than I had the first time, right? Yeah, Twisted Pony says Spotify made them pick music before it would let them search for podcasts. It's <laughs> never done that to me. Uh, now, music comes it, up. Music comes up, but you don't have to do it. Uh, if you download the free version of Spotify, you can go. To, you can just type in anything you want. I mean, I look at hundreds of different ones of them, and I don't never have to. They don't ever ask me any questions. I mean, when I go into Spotify, it does have music there. 
But I go to the search engine and I type in Deep South Homestead Podcast and it pops up. I, I mean, yeah, music is the first thing Spotify puts up because that's what they do the best. When you grow asparagus from seed, does it come up very tiny and feeble? Yes. It makes like a little hair coming up. And it, it'll get it'll get six or eight inches tall. And, and still, you, be, and that still be that little. You know, I mean, it takes about three to four years of... Uh, serious fertilizing and composting and everything before they ever actually make a you know a little thing no bigger than your finger there the ones we planted from seed four or five years at least five years ago we finally this past year last year got some uh, asparagus stalks that were real tiny to eat but then i don't know somebody Chopped them all down. Or Country Homestead Preacher way. said it looks like they took Ice Age Farmer's video off. I figured they would. I didn't get to see it, so I'm screwed, I reckon. Yeah. Is it worth starting a food forest from seed or buy the bare roots? I would buy the bare roots because it, you get it done a lot faster. Uh, Mike says, I still can't get y'all on Spotify or iTunes. I don't know why. I mean, I type it. It comes right up. Uh, There's also Mozi Mo Mozilla, Safari. Um, that's yeah, just but you should be able to download. Odyssey. You should be able to go to Spotify. Yeah. Go Google it from Google. Go to Spotify. Mm -hmm. Download the free app. And then type in Deep South Homestead Podcast, and it should pop right up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Somebody, I, I don't know if they if they put that up. I don't know. They may have put a link. I don't remember if I saw it. Um, Danny, due to some back issues, I'm needing to make some elevated planters. How deep do I make the soil? I want to plant carrots, beans, melon, squash, and so on. At least 16 inches. 12 to 16 inches is the minimum that I would go. Yeah. All right, so... Um, Okay, we're after 9 o'clock. So. Yes. So we should be okay. Oh. Uh, a lot um, of people said they had trouble with Spotify. Well, Idaho Hoosier said they had trouble, but they're in on it now. So. Yeah. And some people say they, they had have no problem. No problem. So, yeah. We just had the free thing. That's all we yeah. have. We don't we don't pay for anything. I'm I'm not going to pay for anything. Yeah, not like that. Uh, you guys like to eat crawfish? No. Well, I used to eat them all the time, but I don't. Not me. I, I don't really eat them that much anymore. It took me a long time to get to eat shrimp, and I will eat shrimp occasionally. You definitely don't want to put any in the pond because they will destroy the dam. As a matter of fact, I, they're starting to pop up around the shorelines of our pond now. And it concerns me because crawfish will destroy the dam of a pond. All right. Okay. So. We have we got to get off here, guys. We've been on here an, over an hour now. Yeah, my nose is and itching. Somebody's talking about us big time. Yes, we got a few things we need to still take care of tonight. Because I just ran in here and jumped on this podcast. I mean, this, I keep thinking about podcasts on this live stream. <laughs> and I didn't get finished doing what I was doing, so I got to. Go finish up everything. I, I think I did get the gates closed, so I did do that. Uh, you can transplant plant asparagus. You just dig the crown up yeah. and move it to where you want to, because I had to move some. We had some in several places, and one of the places was on our hoogle bed, and when I saw it popping up, that's where he planted the seeds. Uh, he planted them in trays and then transplanted them out, and then this year I moved them. Okay, I said... Uh, Christian took the video down himself, but it's on. I, I figured it, he might. It's on his website though, or on, over on BitChute. Yeah, you can go to his website. Um. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. My eyes. I hope they do get better. That soap burnt the fool out of them. I mean, I don't think I've ever had anything burn my eyes that bad. <laughs> uh, we will have another live video next Saturday night at eight o'clock Central Time. Um. Is there any way to stop ants from eating okra? I put coffee grounds. Coffee grounds, grounds around the base of your okra plant will do a, a really good job. Or diatomaceous earth, uh, unless it gets wet. Now, if it gets wet, it's useless. Yeah, but coffee grounds will work if you 
just keep adding what you've used every day if you drink coffee or can get coffee grounds from someone. Kim says, does it snow down here? About once or twice a year. Usually if we're, every if we're, few years. If we're lucky, it'll snow once or twice a year, but not, not, not really, very often. Not, not very, very often. Once or twice a couple of years. Okay. We need to let me get my hat over here out of the way. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your good time tonight with such great people, Father. We've enjoyed ourselves here tonight. Always, It's always a blessing to, to be able to spend time with like-minded people and to be able to uh, to share thoughts and, and wisdom and, and, and Father, to, to help us to have better understanding about the things that surround us. And Lord, there's many people here tonight who, uh, who are always asking for prayer requests. And, and Father, we really appreciate that because we know that prayer is really the one of the main tools that we have to help us live in this old world that we live in. And uh, I do know uh, uh, Mr. Ray's wife, uh, he mentioned she has lupus and we continue to pray for her on a regular basis, Father, and that her lupus will get better and that um, she'll be able to overcome it and her life will get back to normal. And we do pray for that. And we've got lots of people here who've sent us messages. They've got, uh, they've contacted the, the virus and uh, a lot of them are doing pretty good uh, overcoming it. Uh, you know, some have more problems than others, but Lord, we're, we know you're the great physician and we pray for your healing power over their bodies. And I want to just take this moment and pray for people financially, Lord, because we're going into some times where lots of people are losing their jobs because they didn't take the jab in the arm and, and uh, income's getting kind of tight for them. And then uh, there's food shortages coming in the in the near future here, Father. Uh, people are not seeing it right now because they're covering it up. And uh, lots of places are already experiencing it, some places more than others. And we're praying that everybody in the, in the um, live stream tonight can, uh, can get stocked up. There's fixing to be a shortage of toilet paper again. Uh, there's fixing to be a shortage of paper towels again. Certain uh, commodities are fixing to be shortages of. We've already got word that that's coming down the line. Uh, you're going to be limited on the amount that you can buy. And Father, I pray that people will run on out. If you need it, go out and get it now. Don't wait, Father. Help them to have the finances to be able to do it. Lord, uh, watch, over, watch over us here in this country as we're being put through the fire right now, Lord. It's, uh, it's going to be some very trying times ahead for all of us. and um, We've got to stand firm. We've got to stand strong. We've got to stand together through these troublesome times as we have wicked leadership and positions of authority now. You've told us in the latter days of an age that this was going to come to fruition. We're there now. There's no sense in continuing to talk about it. We're there now all we got to do, Father, is just be obedient and have the blessings of obedience from you bestowed upon us. And Father, I do ask tonight that you would grant everyone here in the chat tonight the blessings of obedience, Father, and the financial resources they need to be able to, uh, to live their life the best that they can now. Go with us. Forgive us for we failed you in the kingdom of heaven now. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Ah, uh, okay. Oh. All right. Let's see here. I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, Linda Jones, Hibbity Kitchen's husband. Oh, I told you that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that the Hibbity Kitchen husband had yes. died. Yes. Um, that was a couple of weeks ago, yeah. I think. Yeah, that was, that was, well, about a week ago, I think, maybe. Not, uh, yeah, well, about two weeks ago, because we talked about it on a, a live stream. Yeah, we I talked think. about it last time. Yeah, it was, um, the, both the husband and the wife were very sick. Yes. And, uh, I, I don't remember, did both of them pass? Within a week of each I think, other. I think both of them or passed. Or within two weeks with, of each within other. Within a couple of weeks of each other, if yeah. I, if I remember correct. No, that that's a different person. That was... Um, You're right. That was Pickers. A 
that was the pickers. The, the pickers. Alabama pickers. Alabama pickers, yes. Alabama pickers, uh, the husband and wife passed within a couple of weeks of each other, leaving a couple of children, I yeah. think. Um, I, I, uh, the Hillbilly Kitchen, I remember that from. A yeah, few we days talked ago. about that a, f a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. That okay. Was a different one. Oh. Uh, right. Thank you guys. Thank um, you guys so much for spending oh, time with us here. I do want to mention one thing. What's I didn't that? put a picture up, and I ain't telling them what. But Danny got me something today. And oh it's yeah. Be on crazy days. It'll be on crazy days. You gotta watch crazy days to find out what um, Wanda's new gift was today. Now anybody that's on Patreon's already seen it. Yeah. Uh, I've not really put a video over there. I just sent them a picture. But I will do a video on crazy days. Hopefully Monday, but we'll see. I'll get it up, but I saw it and I wanted it and he went back and got it. <laughs> yes, we did. And Country Homestead Preacher is very right. Be aware, folks, we're in the middle of God's wrath um, of abandonment because we have abandoned him. And now the scripture says in Romans chapter 1, we're not going, not us, but there are the wicked will not know good from evil. He'll turn them over to a reprobate mind and once he does that, uh, they they can't decide and, and determine what's good and what's evil. So uh, that's why we're in the shape we're in right now. We've turned our back on God. Yep. 